Hello everyone. So today we are going to learn about best average and worst case and then we'll talk about asymptotic notations. All right. So let's start with the video. So first of all, let's talk about best average and worst case. All right. So first of all, let's take this example. This is the same example which we took in our previous video. So it is in this we have to find sum of first and natural numbers and for this we have we use a loop which runs from 1 till n and when we add all the iterators and return the sum all right so as we told before what would be the time taken here it will be c1 n plus c2 all right no c1 n because we are um, operating this expression n times and c2 for declaring declaration such as sum is equal to 0 i is equal to 1 etc etc all right and then what will be the order of growth to find order of growth what we will do we will ignore all the lower order terms so c2 gets ignored then we will ignore the leading coefficient uh, coefficient of leading term which is what c1 so we will ignore c1 we are left with n so order of growth here becomes n all right now let's take another example. Yeah, um, so in this we are doing the same thing. We have to you know find some of n natural numbers, all right? But if n is an even number, like we have a condition here, if n percent two is equal to equal to zero, which means if n is an even number, then we don't have to find some then we just have to return zero all right so in such cases you know we cannot make a general statement regarding order of growth all right because c if n is even then uh, we'll just simply return zero so order of order of growth would be what constant but if n is an odd number then we have to go through this loop and then you know the order of growth would be uh, n linear linear time all right so uh, you know in such cases what we do we divide all the cases into three uh, cases into three parts so one is best case average case and worst case all right so let's first talk about best case so best case is the scenario where uh, we have the least order of growth meaning which takes the least time so in this example if n is an even number suppose it is 4 6 or 8 then we'll check if n is even which is which it is then we'll uh, return 0 so this will take what constant time hence the best case here would be a constant right now um, let's talk about the worst case it Worst case would be in the scenario which has the highest order of growth, which takes the most time. So in here, uh, suppose n is odd, uh, you know, like 3, 5, 7, 9 or something. So we have to go through this loop. It will take, you know, linear time. All right. So hence the worst case is a linear time. All right. Now let's talk about average case. Alright, so in average case, we, you know, assume the frequency of all the cases and then we divide the total number of and divide the result by the total number of outcomes. Okay, so let me tell you. Uh, what I mean through this example only suppose I am assuming that even and odd number both are equally likely all right hence um, suppose in uh, in best case because there are only two cases only right? it can be even it and the number can uh, either be even or it can be odd so in the best case it is even so what will be the time then C1 then you know we'll uh, go what if n is an odd it would be the worst case which would be what c2 n plus you know c3 
then you know i what did i tell you we'll divide it by the total number of outcomes there are only two outcomes given or not so we'll divide it all right so what would it result to right that is our question so suppose c1 plus c3 by 2 we take it as another constant c4 and we take c2 by 2 as another constant c5 c5 right hence what would be the order of growth n hence linear so this is how we compute best case average case and worst case so you learned about all these things but now let's talk about which would be better in practical use all right first let's talk about worst case or uh, first let's talk about average case okay so direct if i tell you we cannot use average case at all all right the simple reason is we have to make assumptions on our own and you know different programmers may assume different distributions and it may lead to like different average cases for different people all right suppose i took uh, occurrences of even and odd as equally likely but suppose some another programmer takes it like 90% frequency would be of even and 10% frequency would be of odd then it his average case would be different than mine so average case is you know not efficient for uh, different uh, for different programmers all right now you know let's talk about best case so again simple direct answer we cannot use best case also okay let me give you an example suppose um, you made a software all right and uh, you want to sell it to some company and you tell them that the best case for this is 0 0.01 millisecond or something all right but then you tell them that this is the best case and i don't know like what would be the worst case it can be even hours it can be days anything so by you know common sense you can say that or you would be pretty sure that no one will buy your company buy your software all right so that is it so the only case which we are left is worst case all right so this is what we use most of the time because you know it tells us the max time our program is going to take to execute and this would tell us the exact efficiency of our program okay so this was all about the best average and worst case now let's go to asymptotic notations all right so as we talked previously asymptotic notations are used to define asymptotic analysis all right so what are base let me tell you about what are asymptotic notations so asymptotic notations are mathematical notations which represent the growth of any mathematical function all right there are three famous notations which we will talk uh, here which is big o which tells us about the exact or upper bound on order of growth then there's theta which tells us the exact order of growth and then there is omega which tells us exact or lower bound on order of growth all right so you'll understand better if i tell you through an example suppose um this is an example we have to we, it is a program to find target element in an array all right it is a you know basic uh, linear search program where we take uh, arguments as in an array size of it and the number which we have to find so what we'll do we'll run a loop for i0 till uh, i less than n and if you know we find uh, the target element in uh, in the array we'll return the index where we found it or if we did not find it we'll just simply return minus one all right so this is like the case when we uh, you which we saw in best average and first case so this is you know like quite somewhat example like that suppose if 
my x here is you know 10 all right then what would be my order of growth constant was it the first term i'll just go into the loop i'll find and i'll return so it is you know constant term but what if my x is you know somewhat 75 then i'll iterate through whole of the loop i'll come out of it and then i'll return minus one so what work did i do here linear work all right i you know um, run through the loop n times so i did a linear work so here also there are uh, two cases best case worst case or average case okay average case can be like any intermediate number 30 40 or something all right so you can guess that all right let me uh, talk about best and uh, worst case here all right so best case is linear uh, best case is constant time and the worst case is linear time all right so then there will be like multiple lines Ki my best case is constant and then my worst case is linear time but instead of this i can simply write that the time complexity of this so this operation it is big o of n right i might be thinking might be wondering why see here big o is what it is exact or upper bound on order of growth so the time complexity here can be what it can be either linear or it can be the constant so big o of something like big o of order of growth which is n here which is linear it tells us that either the time complexity of this function is linear or less than that so what is less than a linear it can be constant hence big o tells us that big o of order of growth tells us that it is either exact equal to that or it is less than that or right, it's so on here cool i hope you understand that and now let's talk about theta so theta is you know represented like this suppose i wrote theta n so this means that it is an exact order of growth all right so for this search operation you cannot write theta of n because it means that this program will take linear time but what if uh, the target element is 10 then we will have only constant time hence we cannot use theta n here because it tells us the exact time all right now let's talk about omega what you can write here is omega of one okay one here means constant time right so omega is you know exactly opposite of big o so omega of any order of growth means it is either equal to that or it is higher than that means it can be either a linear time uh, it is it can be either a constant time or it can be higher than that that means either linear quadratic or anything so for this function we can write omega of 1 so this means that it can be either of constant time or it can be greater than that uh, which can be like linear or anything now you must have guessed that we cannot use omega of uh, omega function mostly because you know what it tells us the best scenario and it does not take account of as it does not take out of worst case all right as i told you in the average in the previous section that if you know you made a software and you tell the best case but you don't know about the worst case then you cannot use it so that is what omega does so what we use basically here is only big o and theta 
which I told you about. To make things more clear, let me tell you about this. Yeah. Let's take this example. <laughs> yeah, we have used this many times. It is the same one where we have to find the sum of first and natural numbers. All right. So can you like pause the video and guess the time complexity of this one? All right. So it is it can be either theta. All right, my bad. Yeah, it can be either theta of n or big O of n. All right. Now, as you're wondering if you have got it very well, but let me still tell you like why. See this loop. No matter what, this loop will run n number of time because there is no condition inside it that it has to stop or anything. Like we, it was there in the upper example. So this loop will run for n number of times. Hence, we can find the exact time complexity of it, which is you know theta n. I must be wondering why I said big O of n. So let's go up and see why because see big O tells us exact or upper bound big O tells us exact or upper bound so we can say like big O of n also here all right yeah see many a times we only have to tell either theta or O, big O. Are you getting my point? See, in many times you've, you've been asked question like what would be the time complexity of this? And you cannot tell both of them. So the one which you will tell should be the most efficient one. Okay, so big O of N is what? Key, it is either of linear time or less than that, which means constant. But you can clearly see here that no matter what, it will take n loops to run it. Hence, the time complexity would be, you know, the time taken would be linear. Hence, theta n would, you know, work here. I'm not saying big O of n is wrong, but sometimes the question comes like, we have to tell either one, only one. Either it can be theta of n or big O of n. In such cases, we'll use theta of n. All right. So I hope uh, you get the asymptotic notations. Among these, big o, big o and theta are the important ones. Omega is not used as much and you'll really see it in your future. So concentrate on big O and theta. And uh, I'll end this uh, video today and in the next video we'll take some examples and we'll see the time complexities of the programs and then you'll understand more about when it would be a big O or when it would be theta and there would be examples when we'll take omega so don't worry about that. Alright, so on this note I'll end this lecture.